I'm here with Deborah James, uh, aka Bow Babe, um, but I'm going to call her Debs uh, because that's what your friends call you. That's my real name. That is her name. So, can you tell me a bit about how Bow Babe came about? So, I have bowel cancer. Um, I was diagnosed at the age of 35, so two and a half years ago now. That's really young, isn't it? Really young, um, but not unusual. Um, it's kind of, it's not as common as when, the most common age to be diagnosed is over the age of 50 mm -hmm. um, with bowel cancer. However, there's a growing trend of people under the age of 50, and I was one of them. Um, and I was diagnosed, yeah, at the age of 35 um, with stage four bowel cancer. And they found a six and a half centimetre tumour up my bowel. <laughs> uh, which explains all the change in bowel habits and um, the, the blood. But they also found seven tumours in my lungs. So, in lungs? Yeah, so by the time it had spread, um, so by the time it had been found, um, it had already spread around my body. So it's classified as metastatic bowel cancer. Now, I, over the last couple of years, have had lots of different operations. I still have cancer, it's now in my liver. Um, but I'm under a brilliant team at the Royal Marsden. And I'm just alive and living with cancer. How have you got from your diagnosis to this person who is just is just coping with it in the way that you are? I need people to know that quite often I will have days where I'm horizontal and I can't get out of bed. Um, but then what I try to do is make the most of the time that I do feel well. Um, and I also try to keep myself really healthy in those times um, to allow me the energy, to allow me just to feel good about yourself. I don't want to be the person who just is about cancer. I'm, I'm well, I'm now 37. I enjoy clothes and going out and seeing my friends and exercise and like I love food and I love just I love life actually. We need to see more examples of people just living with cancer. And I think for me, you know, I want to show people that cancer can dance and, you know, ca cancer doesn't have to sit there feeling really depressed about themselves because that's not how I want to live my life. If I've only got a short amount of time, I want to be enjoying it. <laughs> so I'm going to be gutted if I have to, you know, slide in sideways too early, but I'm, I'm planning on sliding in sideways at 90. <laughs> I have a bit of a funny thing where I occasionally I run to, so I'm treated at um, my local hospital which is the Marsden and I run there occasionally which is about eight kilometres and I've Are actually... Are you kidding me? No, but I've actually done, I've actually run to an operation before. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm absolutely serious. And Do they so, love you? No, they'd be like, here, she's, she's coming. I can see her out the window. <laughs> they, they thought I was mad because then I forgot that I was nil by mouth, so I couldn't have any water. <laughs> and I turned up just going, oh, that, that was a bit stupid. And, but, but the whole attitude, I thought, you know what, I'm just about to go in for an operation to try to rectify some lung tumours. Um, I'm not dead yet, so let's run. And I'm a bit competitive, so I said to my surgeon, I said, right, I said, I said, what's the quickest somebody got back running after <laughs> after an operation? And he said, oh, you know, it took somebody about uh, six weeks to get to about 3K. What did you do? So I did 5K in four <laughs> weeks. <laughs> and he was just like, don't worry, you're mad. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> But I like bet that. he goes home and tells his wife, I've got the best patient <laughs> ever, teacher's pet. Sometimes it's not going to make it worse to get up and do something. It actually just might make you feel better. You know, what part does um, food play in bowel cancer? And yeah. what do you do to make yourself feel better? And how does it, yeah. like... So we know, so I'm, I'm a bit of a geek. I'm fascinated by understanding about bowel cancer and gut health especially. And understanding, as I was saying to you earlier, understanding the impact that our guts can have, um, not only on our health, but our well-being and just generally how we feel. Um, and I love food. I'm a bit of a foodie. I'm someone, food makes me happy. Yeah. There are stark facts out there that we can't run away from. And those stark facts are that actually um, we can reduce our risk. Yes, we can't protect ourselves from it but we can absolutely reduce our risk of, of things like bowel cancer and actually 13 types of other cancers as well which is amazing through living a healthy lifestyle and what does that mean because I, I mean we I know about exercise obviously yep. I'm passionate about that absolutely and so 
is the rest of it food. So the rest of it is not just food, it's things like reduce, well not smoking, it's things like reducing our alcohol intake, um, but it's also very importantly having a really healthy diet and part of that there is a massive massive link between fibre or lack of fibre and um, an increased risk, a significantly increased risk of bowel cancer and we know that that link exists um, and we know that actually getting fibre into our diet can be easily rectified. Very and nice. also, let's face it, it we just want quick wins a lot of the time, don't yeah. we? We yeah. need to make it easy yes. because, uh, well, we're all busy mm. and we have to be, we have to make being healthy and preventing your risks of, as, you know, of illness as easy as possible. Because if it's not easy, nobody does it, right? And gut health is such a sort of buzzword at the moment. Often yeah. like, there's a new buzzword for sort of, you know, 2019 and 2019 is definitely gut health. But what, yeah. what is gut health? I think it's understanding that the things that we put into our tummy and then that goes through our gut, which is a huge organ, um, can actually play a significant or has a significant impact on not just kind of fueling our body, but it can have an impact on our immune system, mm. on disease. Your total well-being, our total basically, well -being. right? total well-being. Fibre mm. is a huge part of that. Mm. And it's amazing how it's one thing, isn't it? I know. And I, I appreciate we can't isolate it, mm. but we can say, hang on, I can do something about fibre, right? Mm. Um, quite easily. And, and you know what? I'd probably enjoy it. Yeah. And also, it, it can, <laughs> it can make you poo more, which is great. There are good kind of poos, mm. and there are, because we have a good healthy gut, mm. and there are poos that means that, for example, we require more fibre. Mm. And so actually getting to understand what a good poo is, is actually, we need to be less British about stuff I know, like we've got to be less British about loads of things. I know. We do it every day, it's not like, yeah. you know, it's not, we just got to get over it. We don't it. have poo fairies. No, no, <laughs> but we I should. Just, but I think that actually understanding our gut and understanding mm. that um, you know poo is a product of our gut and actually it can indicate whether we've got a healthy gut or not um, is a really good thing. So kind of like checking it, knowing what a healthy gut looks like, knowing what we can put into it can actually save your life. Mm. And if nothing else, it will just make you feel a bit better about yourself. So I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. 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 You. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Really learnt so much. About poo? Yeah. And Who'd fiber. have thought it? Who'd have thought it? Thanks, Tess. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>